UCLA. Thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, it's my pleasure to go over some of the data we'll be presenting this morning. Uh, these are the interim results of a randomized phase two study evaluating a novel agent, PD0332991, or PD991 for the rest of the presentation, which is a cyclin-dependent kinase 4-6 inhibitor in combination with letrozole versus letrozole alone as first-line treatment for ER-positive postmenopausal breast cancer. This is a new target in oncology. Cyclin-dependent kinases are a large group of serine threonine uh, kinases that play a critical role in regulating cell cycle progression. PD-991 is a novel oral selective inhibitor of CDK4-6. Preclinical studies have demonstrated the ability of this compound to block its target and induce a G1 arrest in the cell cycle. Preclinical data from our laboratory at UCLA evaluated the potential role of this agent in breast cancer using preclinical models and found that there was selective activity for this compound in ER positive HER2 negative or HER2 amplified type cell lines. We went on to show that this agent in combination with anti-hormonal agents uh, were synergistic in inhibiting growth of these models. This led to a phase one study that was presented at this meeting two years ago, which established a safety profile and a dose of PD-991, 125 milligrams daily, three weeks on, one week off, with daily letrozole as the dose to move forward into a phase two study. This is a model of the cell cycle to give you an idea of how PD-991 is working. Cyclin-dependent kinases interact with specific cyclins throughout the cell cycle. In late G1, CDK4-6 interacts with cyclin D and is responsible for hyperphosphorylating the retinoblastoma gene product, or the RB protein. When RB is hyperphosphorylated, it releases a block on the cell cycle, allowing cell cycle progression. The idea here is that PD991 blocks CDK4-6 and therefore blocks this release on the cell cycle. This is the preclinical data from our laboratory. This shows a large panel of uh, human breast cancer cell lines grown in the laboratory that have been molecularly characterized for their specific subtypes of breast cancer. We know that breast cancer is not one disease, and these, this panel of cell lines recapitulates the molecular heterogeneity of that disease. You can see they're color-coded for their subtype, and on the y-axis is their IC50, or a measure of their sensitivity with the lower, cell lower sensitive or more sensitive cell lines being here on the left, the resistant on this side, with an enrichment for ER positive and HER2 amplified subtypes. The phase two study we're talking about today consists of two parts. The first part enrolled 66 patients and randomized them uh, between PD-991 on the, the schedule we discussed, three weeks on, one week off, with two and a half milligrams of letrozole, these patients were all ER positive, HER2 negative uh, in the frontline setting. Part two was an exploratory analysis, enrolling the same cohort of patients, but this time selecting prospectively uh, using FISH for genomic changes in cyclin D1 and P16 uh, proteins and genes that are involved in the cell cycle pathway, randomizing them to the same treatment arms. They were stratified by tumor burden as well as disease-free interval from prior therapy. Both arms were generally well-balanced. The majority of patients had stage four uh, metastatic disease. Approximately half of the patients in each arm uh, were de novo metastatic, whereas the remainder had received prior adjuvant therapy, uh, including prior AIs and tamoxifen and chemotherapy. It's important to note that the majority of these patients had relapsed greater than 12 months from their last recurrence, those that had received adjuvant therapy. This is the response rates for this cohort. Taking all patients together, there's an improvement in response from letrozole to the combination from 26% to 34%. If we exclude patients with bone-only disease and therefore concentrate on patients who have measurable response-accessible disease, the improvement was from 31% to 45%. If we calculate a clinical benefit rate, which includes all responses as well as those patients who had stable disease, for uh, greater than six months, the response rate, or the clinical benefit rate, improves from 44% to 70%. 
This is the Kaplan-Meier curve for progression-free survival for this cohort at this interim analysis. As you can see, there is a dramatic, significant, and clinically meaningful improvement in progression-free survival with the addition of PD-991 to letrozole. Progression-free survival in the control group went from seven and a half months to over 26 months at the time of this analysis. This is a hazard ratio of 0.37. Importantly, this drug is very well tolerated. The most common toxicity seen has been leukopenia, fatigue, and anemia. It's important to note that this leukopenia has generally been uncomplicated. There's been no cases of neutropenic fever, and this was generally manageable with dose reductions and dose modifications. Growth factors were not required or used. You can see here there was some alopecia, which is lumped here as grade one, two. This alopecia was all grade one, which is generally uh, thinning, but no complete hair loss. In conclusion, PD-2991 uh, has uh, a dramatic improvement on progression-free survival it, with its addition to letrozole as compared to letrozole alone. This is both clinically significant and meaningful. These observations confirm our observations seen in the laboratory. That is to say that 991 has significant activity in ER-positive breast cancer models and acts synergistically with anti-hormonal therapy. This regimen is very well tolerated, and a phase three study is planned. Thank you very much.